Alright, today we were going to talk about a very hot topic. <clears throat> and my favorite part of the book known as the Bible. We're going to talk about Revelations. Within Revelations, they talk about the seven seals. <laughs> this is my whole perspective within Revelations and the seven seals. So the seals were opened by God. The forthcoming of the second coming of Christ. So, the seals were opened by God. Now, before anything else, there's four entities that will come to this world known as the four horsemen. Now my question is first following. Are these four entities released by God evil entities or good entities? Let's talk about these entities. These entities are as following. Conquest. War. Pestilence. And death. These four entities carry a mission. Conquest carries a mission of conquering lands in the name of God and spreading the word of God. War is very tied in to what conquest, to conquest. War brings forth destruction pretty much in his name. He, he rages war against those who do not believe in God. Pestilence releases deadly, deadly, what you could say, viruses or deadly plagues to this world. All right? And the final one and the most important one of them all, death. Why do I say death is the most important of all? Because if you see, if you see, all four gravitate towards death. Death being the final one, he's the one who keeps the keys to the afterlife. Death. Death has the keys to the afterlife. No one can go through God if not through his son, right? But Listen to this. God himself gave death the keys to the afterlife. Now, I want to shift to your perspective in the whole thing. If these four entities were released by God, may it be conquest, war, pestilence, and death. Think about it. Are these four entities evil entities or good entities? Because we've seen through time that the, the concept of death has been one of malevolence or something that everybody fears. We all fear death. And if you do not fear death, you've conquered that fear. Right? But death, death himself is not, is not an evil entity. He's just a guide to the afterlife. <laughs> So we portray in media and we portray in, in, in all kinds of uh, artistic and uh, depictions death as a bad omen. But the reality of things is that death within the book of Revelations is more than that. He is pretty much the judger. The judge and jury that takes you from one point in your life, which is your life in general, right? And transfer you from this point to the other side. He holds the keys. So, what I wanted to tell you and what I wanted to talk about pretty much 
is shifting your perspective on what these entities are. You know what I mean? Uh, we fear what we don't understand. Right? We fear what we don't understand. But at the same time, once you understand what you fear, you understand that your perspective has been shifted. And why do I mean by this? I've read Revelations before, and I didn't comprehend this. I did not comprehend that how could God bring forth within the apocalypse four entities that would govern this world until the second coming of Christ. Why would God unleash such powerful beings into this world? Well, the reality of things is that God is coming. And he's coming as a great warrior. God came to this world as a pacifist in the name of Jesus Christ. God came preaching and talking about the love of God, right? They crucify him, right? They crucify Jesus. He did this to atone for our sins, right? But after his death, which in reality, God never died. God never died. Why? Because God can move from one plane of existence into the other one. You know what I mean? God doesn't have to die because he, he can't die. God is eternal. So the point is, he granted these four horsemen the ability to conquer this world. And... God himself will come once more to this world to take control of this world and he will come as a rebel. God will come as a rebel. Not as a rebel against the word of God because God himself is trying to save humanity, right? <clears throat> he will come as a rebel. Not a, not as a rebel in the sense of pure rebellion, pure, re <laughs> pure rebellion against uh, mankind, but against the doctrines of this world. That's what I want to say. God will come as a rebel against the doctrines of this world. What are the doctrines of this world? This world, the doctrines of this world, are everything and anything that the opposite side there are everything and anything that the opposite side of what God is trying to convey and bring forward as in peace and prosperity the doctrines of this world are anything that the dark side of humanity within this world propagates in other words all the evil that is within this world will be relinquished by the hand of God what I'm trying to say is that this rebel that will come as a warrior first of all because God will come as a warrior a warrior that can conquer all so this warrior that can conquer all will come and will lay rest to everything, everything and anything that is of opposition to him. God will come with the word. What is the word? The word. The word of God is the beginning and the end. God will come with the word. As a matter of fact, God himself will come and 
just a mere fact. Listen to this. Just a mere fact of God talking will bring you down to his knee, to your knees. Will bring you down to your knees. Because in that moment, you'll realize that in reality, you're talking to the all supreme being, the one that created you, the almighty creator. And when you talk to this entity, this thing that comes to this world as a man, this entity, because this entity, the creator, is much more than we can comprehend. What I'm trying to say is that once you hear the words from this entity, the almighty creator, and the powerful one, the one that can relinquish everything and anything, this information that he will share with you will bring you down to your knees. But first, he must open all the seals. And the first four seals are the four, the four horsemen. These four horsemen will govern this world until the second coming of God. These four horsemen have the power bestow upon them by the almighty creator to govern this world until he comes back. In my opinion, these four entities are not nothing more than a precursor of what God has in store for this world. We will all be judged by God. But the reality of things is that judgment will be de delivered to this world. And the reality of things is that Throughout the judgment of this almighty being known as God will bring forward the truth and will bring forward the understanding and will bring forth the truth and the understanding of what the Creator really had in store for us. We will live in paradise once again, just as God created the heavens and created the world and created everything. He created the Garden of Eden. The whole, the sole purpose of God coming to this world is as following. God will bring the heavens back to this world. He will, he will create another Eden within the world. God will, this is a promise, God will deliver his message and deliver peace and prosperity but first we have to go through tr through uh, tribulations and these tribulations are what they talk about in revelations what they talk about in revelations as a punishment is not a punishment to the people of God as a matter of fact what they talk about in revelations is the punishment to the other side, to the non-believers, the ones that are fueled by the doctrines of this world, the doctrines of this world, the, the puppet masters, the ones that control the whole orchestra, you know what I mean? They will be judged for leading God's people 
into the mice. Creation, is sh creation itself will be shifted. What do I mean by this? The understanding of creation and the understanding of life itself will be shifted. We've been living too much in pleasure. We've been living too much in in our own uh, self-gratitude and within our own uh, pleasurable uh, life. The word is indulgence. We've lived in indulgence of pleasure within our life, right? But the pleasure that God will bring towards us is one of understanding and I don't know if the word is the understanding that God will bring to this world is one of pleasure but not pleasure in the sense of indulgence pleasure in the sense of understanding what the word of God really is seeking the answers of what life truly is anyways that's what I wanted to say you'll have a great day May God be with you and be the best human being you can be in this world because once tribulation comes and God is revealed to this world and we understand who he is, who this entity is, we will understand what the purpose is of us in this world is so god bless y'all you'll be safe in this world because there's yet more to come to this world and once those seals are open once those seals are opened god brings forward what he has in store for us you will have to pick a side you will have to pick a side you can't live in the gray anymore. And the Bible says God prefers you to be hot or cold. What does this mean, being hot or cold? Because if you're lukewarm, if you're lukewarm, God will spit you out of his mouth. So think about that. God wants you to be either hot or cold. You ain't supposed to be in between. No, you're supposed to be either hot or cold. Now pick a side. Once again, God bless y'all, and you have a great day.